And today we're going to talk about this story of three I Atlas appearing from behind the sun ahead of schedule, reappearing from its solar conjunction. So there's an article here even saying that scientists may have lied about the true position of three I Atlas. So we're going to talk about that. And we're also going to talk about a very interesting discovery, the first detection of complex organic molecules outside the Milky Way. This is something unprecedented. Molecules, the building blocks of life, were found outside our galaxy. So these are the topics we're going to cover in today's video. I don't even need to say that what found this was the James Webb, this telescope that has been making headlines. So if you guys like the way I bring information to you, want to help out, leave a like there, leave a comment that helps a lot for YouTube to understand that this video is relevant and spread it to more and more people. I leave here my many thanks. So now we're going to talk about these discoveries about space. Let's start then with this article here related to the James Webb. Has anyone managed to see this through a telescope? You can see it with the naked eye in the interior, which is the Magellanic Galaxy, the Large Magellanic Cloud. Have you managed to see it? Write it in the comments. Well, for the first time, scientists detected complex organic molecules outside the Milky Way. They are trapped in ice surrounding a forming star called ST6, located in the Large Magellanic Cloud about 160,000 light years from Earth. That's where the James Webb found it, using the James Webb Space Telescope. The team identified five carbon-based compounds, ethanol, acetaldehyde, methylformate, and acetic acid. Of these, only methanol had been observed before in young extragalactic stars. Acetic acid, the main component of vinegar, for example, had never been conclusively detected, not even in ice within our galaxy. So we found something unprecedented even within our galaxy. We found this outside the galaxy. This is impressive. These molecules are considered building blocks of life. Their presence suggests complex chemical reactions that can occur even in environments with few heavy elements, like primitive galaxies. This is just another indication that life can happen anywhere in the universe. Scientists also found evidence of glycolaldehyde, a molecule that can give rise to ribose, essential for RNA, which reinforces the idea that the ingredients of life are universal. The study published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters on October 20th, 2025 represents an important advance in astrobiology, showing that the chemistry of life can emerge throughout the cosmos, even in extreme conditions. So this is another point for us to think about. We may not really be alone in the universe. Life may be abundant in places we least expect. And people keep saying, how does the James Webb with all its lenses make pixelated images? Guys, this is raw infrared material. Each pixel has information about the composition of this object. And then scientists take each of these pixels and study them. So this is raw material, raw data for research. It's not a sharp image for us to be dazzled and put on our phone's wallpaper. People complain, wow, what an image. Looks like it was made by Atari. No, guys. Those are raw infrared data that help scientists understand the composition of things. Okay, now, my friends, let's get to the controversy. I always like to show my sources, the studies here. It will be here below in the description for you to read and click. Let's go now to the next one here. There's a post that came out saying the following. Dear friends, something very curious may have happened. The projection indicated that 3i Atlas should move to a point behind the sun as seen from Earth on October 29th today. However, it appears to have advanced in its orbit and re-emerged from the solar glare earlier than we expected. So this article, this post came out, saying that 3i Atlas reappeared from behind the sun ahead of schedule. This could indicate artificial movement and so on. And this statement is based on a text that was published on a blog. And what this text, I'll leave it here below in the description, has several observation data that they made. They say here that the astronomical community would have lied about the position of the interstellar object 3i Atlas. According to the author of the text here, while all websites and official agencies said the comet would be behind the sun, invisible during perihelion, October 29th, once again today, observations made on October 25th would show the object visible next to the sun in the constellation Virgo. So they say that 3i Atlas was not behind the sun, it would have appeared already on October 25th. What do you mean? If the perihelion was going to be on the 29th. The author of the text here claims that there are still trajectory anomalies in brightness, 
suggesting accelerations not explained by gravity, which in the author's view would indicate an active maneuver. The text mixes this data with institutional distrust, once again questioning observation institutions, insinuating that there would be an attempt to hide the true behavior of the object. So let's try to understand what is being claimed here in the text. Well, the comet approaches perihelion, the closest point to the sun in its trajectory. It will approach perihelion today, which is when it's closest to the sun. This makes it appear much closer to the sun in the sky, almost superimposed on its brightness. That's why astronomers say the object is behind the sun or in solar conjunction, which would be correct, the correct term to use. It's a technical expression that doesn't physically mean it's hidden behind the sun, but rather unobservable due to the sun's intense brightness. There's a term they use here, which is solar elongation. And what does that term mean? It's the angle between the sun and the object in the sky measured from Earth. The smaller this angle, especially below about 15 degrees, the more difficult it is to observe this object from Earth because it blends with the solar brightness. Therefore, saying that 3i Atlas would be invisible is just a simplification of the term. It doesn't disappear in space. It's just temporarily obscured. It's that astronomers understand the sun not only as its core, the star, but also the entire solar corona, all its brightness. Do you understand? So 3i Atlas doesn't physically pass behind the sun it's obscured by the sun's brightness. But if you have the right instrument, you can observe it even at this moment of perihelion. It was never said that it would be impossible to see. It would be very complicated to see it because of the brightness. It's obscured. Observations made a few days before perihelion, like on October 25th that they put here in the text, can show the object next to the sun, depending on the observer's latitude and time. This doesn't contradict astronomical predictions. In fact, this even confirms that it's in the region of the sky expected by scientists, with a very low solar elongation, which I just explained to you. The allegations of active maneuvers and acceleration that they talk about here in the text, non-gravitational acceleration, lack confirmation in independent observatories and scientific publications. There's nothing in the scientific literature about 3i Atlas that talks about this. Small differences between predicted and observed positions are normal in comets since the gas jets it emits due to sublimation can slightly alter its trajectory. It gives some small wobbles to 3i Atlas. So, just summarizing here, what these people are saying here, 3i Atlas is not hiding on purpose. It didn't intentionally go behind the sun so we can't see it. It's just passing through a region of the sky that's very close to the sun, and so the brightness ended up obscuring it. Official predictions didn't get it wrong. They indicated precisely this low elongation. Exactly. What was seen there was strictly predicted. No peer-reviewed evidence points to artificial behavior at this time. There's nothing about velocity change, acceleration, and nothing. No article, nothing in the scientific literature, nothing from independent observations by amateur astronomers, and everything. Nothing points to this. In a few days, as it moves away angularly from the sun, it will be observed again with clarity, exactly as predicted. That is, if anything is left of it, if it's not torn apart by the sun's heat and gravity. So that's it. It's that it's a convenience in astronomy to say that the object will be behind the sun, but actually it's just being obscured by the sun's brightness. Physically, it won't pass behind the sun. So if you observed it on the 25th, depending on the latitude you're at and the time and everything, you could see it, yes. So that's it. Look, the same person who spread, started to spread this information on Twitter, came back later today on the 29th to retract, researched, and came to the same conclusion I'm making here for you. What was said? This confusion about the three I Atlas position arises mainly from the imprecise use of the expression behind the sun. Many interpret this as a literal occultation, physically behind the sun, as if the comet were physically hidden behind the solar disk, but in practice, it only means behind the sun's brightness. In other words, it's very close angularly to the sun in the sky, which makes its observation difficult from Earth. Everything I said to you is said here. Another post was made today also saying, my main source, this article from Universe Today. In this article, there's a figure showing the orbital geometry. And we can see that the line connecting 3i Atlas to Earth doesn't intercept the sun. This confirms that the object isn't literally behind the sun, 
but rather beside it within the region obscured by its brightness. So the person themselves backtracked, actually just asked, don't you find this strange? And then went to research and some people also responded in the comments, said, that's not it. They explained exactly what I'm explaining here to you. And this post was made kind of a retraction about the previous opinion that was issued yesterday on Twitter. So that's it. It's that this person has a somewhat controversial history for spreading some rather strange things about space. Has some very fanciful claims. Is well known for that. Gives lectures that mix pseudoscience with science. So has there a somewhat controversial past. Is not an astronomer. Is a plasma physicist. And within the astronomical community, the astronomy folks don't really approve much. The people don't really approve much in the sense that talks about some things, like nuclear wars on Mars, among other things like that, without having robust evidence for it. Even published an article, but the journal that received it is a low credibility journal. So always keeps throwing these things on Twitter, keeps throwing some outlandish things, and sometimes people correct it right there, which is what happened. So that's it. 3 iAtlas didn't appear ahead of schedule behind the sun. We live at an absurd speed on the internet. And sometimes we have something we want to share right away. Sometimes we share before having a review, before having research, and then later we have to go back on the internet. Say, we were wrong. We were eager to post and didn't verify properly. And that's what happened. The issue of the alert that NASA supposedly made. NASA didn't make any alert. People could simply have gone to verify on NASA's website and they didn't. They went out posting. And that's it. Unfortunately, it's the speed of the algorithm. People want to post as fast as possible, as quick as possible, better, to take advantage of the hype of 3i Atlas. And that's not how things work. We have to do things carefully. At least there was a retraction. Went there, was wrong. Actually, it's a term that astronomers use, which actually is a term that shouldn't be used. Better solar conjunction, better than saying it's behind the sun. But anyway, so that was it. It's still visible, but it's in a part where the sun's brightness obscures it. So that's it. I'm signing off here with this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave your comments there. If you liked it, leave a like that helps the channel grow a lot.